Hi, this is uh, Le Cong uh, from the Broad Institute and the Montgomery Institute for Brain Research at MIT. Some of the examples, the existing technology that could really allow us to perform such genome engineering process. Before getting into uh, the detail, we can imagine what are the desired ideal genome engineering technologies. So here are four different criteria that we can assess a genome engineering technology. And the first characteristic of an ideal technology would be it should be easy and fast to build, meaning that we can scale it up very easily and to build as many targets as we like, given the big data biology challenge. The second is it has to be low cost open source for research purposes so everybody can use it. And third, it needs to have very precise and efficient activity for genome modulation or modification. And lastly, uh, if it has scalable application across different biological systems, we'll be able to apply it to many different model systems for studying biology or disease, for example, flies, yeast, and C. elegans, etc. So in terms of the specific cases, most of the genome engineering technology tools that we have developed are based, inspired by natural occurring systems. So here are two examples. The first example is zinc finger protein, which is probably one of the most well-known and the classic genome engineering tool. These are zinc iron-containing protein motifs that can specifically recognize three base pair region along the double-stranded DNA. So in this figure on the left, you can see that if you link three zinc fingers together, you'll be able to recognize multiple sequences along the genome. However, this technology uh, is com commercially controlled by companies uh, and are not very easily used by academic researchers. On the right is a very newly developed promise technology called transcription activator-like effectors, or TAILS. The TAILS have a very interesting DNA binding mechanism in which it uses a 34 amino acid repetitive module to recognize DNA. And each of these modules will recognize one DNA base. Because people have figured out how to design, basically, these protein modules to recognize each of the four bases. It's very easy to engineer the tau effectors to recognize a specific sequence of the choice. And on the bottom right, you can see the structure of the tail as it wraps around a double-stranded DNA and inserting into the major group to recognize different bases. However, the tail are not as scalable as you like, because for each of the new sequence you would like to target, you have to build a new protein, which takes time and effort. Now, uh, a new development in the field is CRISPR, or Clustered Regularly Interspaced Palindromic Repeats. These uh, CRISPR loci are basically microbial immune systems harbored in the bacteria. The bacteria uses the CRISPR system system, and it's associated protein called Cas proteins, to defend against phage infection. To simplify them, uh, the mechanism, the CRISPR and Cas system basically use an RNA-guided nucleus in which a small RNA will guide a protein or a protein complex to recognize a specific DNA sequence through base pairing between RNA and DNA, and then introduce a double standard break. So imagine this system will be really powerful because by simply engineering the RNA part of the system, you will be able to change the specificity of its DNA recognition, allowing very high throughput application of the CRISPR-Cas system in many different cells. So we think this technology will potentially transform the field of genome engineering. And we'll, at a separate time, to talk about this CRISPR-Cas system in detail. Overall, all the three systems have satisfied certain aspects of these four criteria we laid out earlier, and we believe with all these wonderful choices and technology, uh, we have now entered the age where we can use genome engineering technology to perform very uh, fascinating biological research and apply them for medical purposes. Thank you very much.